What's going on everybody? Jeremiah here from Babylon My Backyard, a pond and garden channel packed full of informative and how-to videos for you. I'd like to take a quick second to thank all of my fans. I'm blown away at how many people are actually interested in some of the stuff that I'm doing. So, big thank you. I, I started this channel just thinking, well, I'm going to document the stuff that I'm going to be doing because I was already going to be doing it. And I thought, well, if I throw it on YouTube, we'll see what happens. And I'm just very blessed that everybody is enjoying this. Today's video, we are going to be building this flood drain bed. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about the framing and legs. We'll be speeding through that. If you're interested in, in the details of that, I have done that in previous videos, so check that out in the top corner. So we're gonna jump through those, and then we'll get into the guts of this build. So I get my height from checking the previous lettuce raft bed. The top of this bed just has to be lower than the drain line of the previous bed so that the water drains into this flood drain bed. I'm gonna get my legs built. They're this the L shape. You can see this in previous videos as well. Just like in previous videos, one's gonna be supporting and one's gonna be attaching. We'll get the legs attached and then we'll put the support on the bottom. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my uniseal over here. Remember this is a previously used flood drain bed so this actually was connected to multiple barrels and they were all connected underneath so the water flowed in between the three of them. For this case I just need to plug it. Okay so now I'm putting the uniseal inside here. This piece is all glued together. I've got a small amount of water and olive oil in this. That's capped now just making sure that that doesn't come out. Now, obviously if you were starting from scratch, you would not have needed to do this because you would never have drilled that hole. All right, I just went and got mic'd up so you could hear me a little better. There's a lot of noise in here, so I didn't want you not to be able to hear clearly when I got to the important part. This is the important side for any additional new builds. I have a barrel split and framed, just like all of my other videos, but this is critical. Here is a one inch bulkhead fitting. So we're not doing uniseal here. This is a bulkhead fitting because we need this thread inside here of one inch. Basically, you're drilling through this barrel for that one inch bulkhead fitting. Whatever size to clear for this, you're gonna drill through here. This piece is a cap for a four inch pipe. This is crucial to making this successful. A lot of people fail right here. They don't put this in. If you do not put this in, you are going to suffer later. I promise you that. You're gonna have to empty the whole thing out and start over again. So make sure that you do this part of it because this part of it protects the bell itself on the bell siphon from the media falling in on it. So you need to be able to access that bell separate from the media. This is going to allow you to do that. I've taken this cap and I put it on here and I've drilled and cut whole slits to match. Well then I take the cap off of this and then I drill one hole in it, the same clearance hole as in the barrel goes inside that cap. Normally you would have your seal up against the, the flange of, of your bulkhead fitting so it's got that rubber washer. I have the rubber washer under the cap against the barrel and then I'm sandwiching down and holding it in place with the cap here. All right, so down here, the piece here, which is a one inch thread to a one inch slip, and I have that threaded into the bottom with this one inch slip. So then when the siphon kicks off up there, it'll drain into the tank that'll be right here. And as that gets full, it'll pump it back up and over to the IBC tone. Let's talk more about how this bell siphon works. Again, here I have a one inch down here and on this time, this piece is going one inch to three quarters inch. So this piece is three quarter pipe. Up here, it goes three quarter to one inch. And I need that because 
let me thread this in here real quick and then we'll talk about how the siphon's going to kick on. And I want this to be pretty snug in there. So now up here, because this is going, it's reducing down as it drains, it's going to, water's going to flow over, surface tension is going to cause it to flow over and stay nice against that wall. But because I have it splashing then inward to the smaller diameter, so the water goes down and shoots in, it cuts the air off. Once that air is cut off, that's when that siphon kicks on. If it were just right there, it's just going to siphon until it caught air again because there's no nothing causing it to, to not catch air. It's, it's up here exposed. Air will be caught. That is why you actually use the bell. So this is clapped off on the end. As this goes over the top of that, now all the water has to go from underneath up through and over. And because that's happening, the air it can't get caught until it reaches down here. So when that siphon kicks on, it's going to start pulling hard all of the water out of this tub all the way down until it catches air down here. And once it catches that air, then it will stop the siphon and it will continue to fill again. The shroud is just to ensure that I can access here and tinker with this bell as I need to. Sometimes you might need to take it out make a tweak or adjustment. I've had to make many adjustments to this one over the years. And then I've got a cap that goes over the top of it just to make sure that no debris falls in because I had it originally outside. So before we get the media put in here, let's go ahead and give this thing a test. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go rinse the media that's gonna go in here and then we'll get the media in here. Okay, what we're using is Hydroton expanded clay pellets. It's very dusty. I don't want all of that red clay dust inside of the system, so I have built this strainer. It's just a bucket with a bunch of holes drilled in it for rinsing rock and such. This is no different, it's just rinsing media instead of rock. Do this until it's clear and then I'll go put it in there. We're just gonna do this over and over until we get that thing full. Let's talk a couple things about this media. So expanded clay media is usually the preferred choice for doing flood drain beds like this. But this stuff's not cheap. Online, often it's pretty spendy. If you find a hydroponics store near you, I would just check like any hydroponics stores around you to find different pricing. As you can see, this is 100 liters right here and I still need a little bit more. I'm not real happy that I didn't fill it. I thought I'd have extra. Now I have to go get some more. I have done this before. This is not my first flood drain bed. Previously, I did it with lava rock and it worked okay, but I had um, some issues and then when I was looking into the fact that lava rock can sometimes cause your alkaline to jack up in your water, I decided to go with this because it's neutral, pH neutral product. So next thing I got to do is get the plumbing hooked up from the previous lettuce raft bed draining up and over into this bed, which is lower than that bed. Okay, here we are on the drain from the previous. This up here is the lettuce raft. I've got a two inch elbow here with a reducer to one inch there. So that's gonna go on to the bottom of this. I do have some root from the lettuce raft sticking out. I gotta cut that off there so that I can make this work. Just need to cut it right there. Now I have to bring the one inch line over and elbow up to above and then kick it around. 
gonna be about seven inches. Okay, so I got my piece here. And now I'm gonna push it into this guy. I do need to make sure that it's good and in there. Now I've gotta determine my height up. Okay, I've got my whole assembly here. I just have to get under here and really make sure that that's pulled together. All right, there we go. We've got this thing draining now, just the way it should be draining up into here. Now let's go ahead and adjust the drain over there so that it starts draining again. Okay, we got some trickle coming in now. So we've got full siphon happening now. It's draining fairly fast. But as that goes, that's going to fill down there, which will kick on the pump and start the whole thing over again. I'll put the mic down here. We'll see if we can hear the siphon. There it goes, just caught it. So one of the things we're noticing here is that the water is coming up above the media. The media actually still is floating up with the water level. That's a good indicator that you don't have enough media in here. The media should be dry on top, just barely on the top layer should it be dry. This is cycling great right now, so this is gonna kick on any second now, as soon as that starts draining because I have the pace really good. There it goes, I can hear it. So I am going to run back to my hydroponics store and pick up another bag of this media. We'll get it rinsed up and we'll throw it on top of this. All right, I got the rest of the media in here. So this top layer should stay dry. I'll maybe get a little bit more media and throw it around here to cover up this. So wherever there's water exposed to the sun, it will start building algae in that spot because the water is exposed. That's why you want this top layer to stay dry and the wet layer to be just below that. But what I want to show you right now though is how to plant a plant. So this is broccoli so this is an example of a very far along plant so i normally don't have to dig so far down in here to get the roots in there but in this case i will have to move a lot of this aside so now that root will, will get wet as this thing fills up once the siphon kicks on, then it drains the water back down and that sucks oxygen down through the, the media and into the roots. So the roots get all that oxygen. Here is another broccoli. This is a small start of broccoli. I still need more media here. Sometimes your flood drain bed could look like this. This is happening because of an airlock trap. This lower tank happens to be very close to the bottom of the barrel. I just didn't have a lot of space left here. So because of that, the drain itself is currently in the tank water down below. So let's explain a little bit more about what's going on here. In my scenario where my drain line is being submerged by the drain tank, every once in a while when the siphon has reached its end point and the air is about to catch down here, the water level in the tank below is high enough to close off any oxygen from traveling back up through the bottom of the pipe. As oxygen is introduced through the bottom of the bell, it'll get trapped up top here 
and it works like putting a cup over the top of water where it just traps the air inside. So when that air is trapped inside, then the water that's flowing into the flood drain bed can, can continue without draining down this line and then it overflows above the bell. That's not a good thing. You want to make sure that this isn't going to happen. So I have to change the plumbing so that the drain line is higher than the level that my automatic pump will kick on at so it never gets trapped underwater. Now to fix this, if I'm out here, it's pretty easy because I just have to lift this and then it starts siphoning. The little bit of air that was trapped under the bell it just has to be adjusted so that it, the siphon kicks on again. The downside is if I don't come out here often enough, my roots will be submerged in water for way longer than they should be. And then I could have root rot in my plants. Okay, so as you see here, I've swapped out the long extension for a straight elbow here. Hopefully it'll work. I'm a little concerned because of the fact that I'm going to be shooting that straight almost equal to the top. And if that segment kicks on and it's too powerful, I could have some issues with the water shooting over. Here we go. We're going to figure it out pretty quick here. As soon as that siphon kicks on, so it's just trickle, trickle, trickle right now. And yeah, oh yeah, that's splashing over. But normally I wouldn't have it that far. Still splashing a lot. Okay. Let's do a test to see if this guy works out. I just have this, it's hard to tell, but it's down at an angle just a little bit. Yeah, looks like to be a problem. Looks much better now. I just moved this in so it wasn't pushing straight against the wall. didn't fully cover that so we should be good. Air can still get in. The air is releasing. Up top there the, the gurgle indicates that the air released all the way so now no air is trapped. So everything seems to be working pretty great now since I've fixed the lower part. It's cycling and we haven't been getting stuck. With what my setup is running from the IBC tote, it's draining into the first of the lettuce rafts and then it drains into the second lettuce raft. As it keeps running, the amount that that's draining is becoming less because plants in this current state that you're seeing, I have a fairly mature raft and a new raft that I've just recently started. Not very long ago, I had two pretty full rafts. The more plants that I have here or even up there, all these plants are absorbing water. Additionally, the sun causes this greenhouse to get very hot. And then we get a lot of steam off when the temperatures outside cool down so much. You can see how much condensation is built on the roof. And that up there is not rain on the outside. That is condensation building on the inside. It is just that much colder outside than it is in the greenhouse. So we lose a lot of the water of, off evaporation. Because of that, I do need to watch the, the levels of this water. Right now I've just hit this stage where my amount of water that's flowing in the system is not great enough to continue the cycle. Now I'm not stuck or anything, but that's pretty much done for how much water is being drained into this bed. So I have to occasionally add a little bit more water to the system just so that it will continue to cycle. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Don't miss any of the great videos that we have coming. We've got some really cool stuff in the works right now that I am very excited about. If you hung around this long and you're interested in seeing more about what's going to be planted out in this and growth progress of all of my stuff going on in here, check out our social media, Instagram, Facebook, 
You can either check it out in the description below or if you go to our homepage on YouTube, we have links out there. Now that you've hit the subscribe button, go check out some of these other videos in case you didn't see them all. And we'll see you in one of those videos.